From your first alert station, this is WALB News 10 with continuing Hurricane Michael coverage. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we want to keep you updated on Hurricane Michael, which is an extremely dangerous category for a hurricane, although it made landfall uh, about an hour or so ago between Panama City and Mexico Beach uh, there along the Florida Panhandle. And even some power outages uh, uh, expanding or growing in the Tallahassee area. So you know that's getting a little bit closer to us. Now you remember Panama City Beach, of course, has some very high codes about uh, the way they build buildings, the way they they string their wire and you can see a number of trees down. You can see building damage there. You can see the electrical lines are down. And this is a very dangerous situation right now as we take a look at this uh, live video. You can see roof, it looks like roof material right. that's been ripped off the top of uh, buildings. Trees you can see down. down. You see those power lines are down. This has obviously been a very, very powerful storm that has ripped through Panama City Beach. And you can see people are just now starting to get out and take a look around. You can see that roof has been ripped off the top of that house. It appears to be just hanging on the side. Across the street over there, you see more damage to those homes. This is a live shot from Panama City Beach. We're just now getting updates on some of the damage that has been seen there. And this is uh, obviously wow. Hurricane Michael has taken its toll there. Well, we're going to be getting more updates about the damage and where Michael has gone. Send your pics to, to pictures, your social media. We know a lot of people are sharing mm -hmm. social media. Send it to pics, P-I-X, at WALB.com. Share them with us, and we'll share them with everyone around so we can keep an update about what's going on. We are still getting uh, some more social media posts in from the Florida Panama City area. I want to show you uh, this video here, um, if it can play. It shows uh, just how um, how much damage in this one specific area. This is from Blow Boater PCB on Instagram. Uh, you see the winds is still uh, still pretty high there, but you also see what looks like uh, it could have been a mobile home uh, completely damaged there as well in this backyard. I also want to show you a video from uh, Twitter from at Sandman PCB. Uh, this it says major damage occurring to this motel. It says windows are being blown out. So uh, this is a couple hours ago and we're going to see uh, this roof just kind of get ripped off um, or at least the top part of this roof. He says this is a motel uh, there in Panama City. There it goes. You see it uh, just kind of fly off like it was uh, nothing like it was paper uh, and those trees as well kind of uh, go in par parallel a little bit to the ground. Uh, so we're getting a look at this damage from uh, Twitter. But like Jim said, if you you have uh, safely taken any photos from here in southwest Georgia, uh, you can send that to pics at WALB.com. Uh, but again, don't leave your house to do that. If you can safely take a photo from what's going on inside your house, uh, what's going on outside, uh, but don't put yourself in any danger to get videos or photos like this. Following uh, what we're looking at as far as damage goes here in southwest Georgia here at our first alert desk. Back to you. Guys, I mean, as you can clearly see, like she said, I'm in Bainbridge and we're getting a lot of wind. We're in an overshadow right here. We've got something over our heads, but we're still catching a lot of this wind and rain coming from the sides. And we've had to monitor everything that's been flying around. We've even got some garbage can tops flying around. Doors over there, as you can clearly see, are being opened. And we had a generator blow up about 15 minutes ago down the road. So it is clear that this is a definite situation that nobody needs to be out in if you do not have to be. And it's a very serious matter. Now, like they said, I mean, there's just wind flying all over. There's a bunch of rain. And at this point, with this kind of rain, you can't see the bottom of the road. So it's not only dangerous because of the wind, the flying debris, but you have to worry about with this much water, the vegetation's not going to be able to soak up as much as they should. And it's going to start spilling over into the roads. And you won't be able to see how shallow the road truly is. Now, I, on the way in here, I even saw some things flying around just a little bit. And that was before we even had really Hurricane Michael all the way here. But now that it's here in Bainbridge, you are urged to stay inside by state officials and even PIO uh, the Bainbridge Fire and Rescue Van uh, Aiken, when I spoke to him yesterday, he said that this was a very serious matter and that everybody needs to stay inside if possible. And we will keep you up to date as much as possible and stay on your WAOB app and watch WAOB for right now live in Bainbridge. John Barron, WAOB News 10. It's not time to change forecasts. It's now time to uh, get into your safe room and get ready for 
uh, category to Hurricane. We're going now to Mayor, I'm sorry. Grayson. Grayson. Uh, we, we had a situation, I believe, where um, there were power outages due to lines being down, and our Grayson Passmore is standing by with more on that. Yes, those heavy winds have caused some power lines to fall. As you can see behind me, this is where it just happened. A power line fell onto another line in what neighbors say caused a big ball of blue fire and it caused a huge loud sound. They said they were all scared and then the power went out. They say that it is still out. We have reached out to city officials. They are working on getting us some more numbers of how many power outages there are on the street right now. I have talked to city officials about what to do if you see a downed power line. They say avoid it at all costs. Don't try to drive, walk near anything. They say this is extremely dangerous and they are working to get to every downed line as soon as possible. They've even brought in extra crew and extra linemen from even out of state to come in and try to work on power outages because they are expecting them and they are expecting more down lines. We'll continue to update you as we learn more. In Albany, Grayson Passmore, WAOB News 10. Um, this, this is very serious. Do not take it lightly. Make sure you write your name and number and next of kin on a piece of paper and put it in your pocket. This is not good. This is very serious. Pay attention. Now let's look, continue our team coverage. WLB News 10's John Barron is in Bainbridge. We're going to check in with him right now to see what the storm effects are right there. Guys, as you can see, the rain has kind of let up, but the wind is relentless. And as you can see, we're on the top deck of the EOC. But right now, as you can see right here, all of these barrels have been just pouring in from the left. They were all way down there towards the construction site, and now they're still rolling, and many of them are just spread out all throughout the land. And another thing, if we can get a look over here, is those trailers. They're way out here. They're going to be all the way over there. They started way down there by the land, and now they have tipped all the way over. They're on their sides way out here, so this wind is relentless, and the rain is kind of starting to still kind of be something that we got to worry about. There's a lot of flash flooding in the area, but a lot of this wind is going to be treacherous for this area. And like we've been told by police, they're doing everything they can to make sure that they're helping those that are stuck and in trouble. But for right now in Bainbridge, John Barron, WAOB News 10. You can see those wind gusts are really howling all across oh, South yes, Georgia and, right now. And here in Albany above uh, our station, we can hear it, the winds. It gets and quiet and then the, the winds whip up again. So it's it's not a hurry yet. I mean, we're still just building up. Yolanda? This is getting very close, uh, Carla. Actually, it is still just off to our southwest, beginning to move just east of Highway 27 over areas of Miller County. But of course, we're still dealing with a ma major Category 3 hurricane. Max sustained winds at 115 miles per hour, gusts up to 155 miles per hour. And uh, Michael right now is moving toward the northeast at about 13 miles per hour. So there are no more places to sleep there. If you do, they're still welcoming people in, but you would have to sleep on the floor. So resources are already full. Like I said, again, we're already under that curfew and we are waiting for the worst of the storm to come and take uh, Thomasville to see what we need to do afterwards. But uh, really, they're just stressing that everyone stay off the roads. EMS says they're not responding to any calls at all unless they are a state of emergency and dire. So you just wanna make sure that you and your family are being as safe as possible and all also, if you're calling 911 and you're not getting through, but they're not ignoring your calls, they just have an overflow of calls and they will get back to you as soon as they can. But I will be sure to keep you updated with what's happening here in Thomasville and surrounding areas. But back to you all at the desk. Now this is downtown Albany and uh, looking down the streets there, you can see the winds blowing. This is uh, right beside the mule barn right across from the uh, Hilton Garden Inn. Is that Front Street? This uh, was toward France. Front Street looking like down Broad Avenue. I believe that's Broad Avenue. Federal Courthouse just right down that street. And you can see the wind is still howling in downtown Albany as well. And now let's take a look at some video. We understand that our WLB News 10's Grayson Passmore shot some trees and power lines. This is at Dawson and Dawson Road and Stewart Avenue, I understand. And there are some power lines down there. I understand there are also some uh, trees. There you see a great deal of water, but we understand there are power lines down across that road. And that is, and that is obviously not a good news there because uh, that is a very busy intersection. It's okay. near the Albany Mall. 
There we can see it is uh, Stewart Avenue in Barnesdale, looks like that appeared to be. And that is a very busy intersection and a lot of power lines down there. So you want to be making sure that you stay out of the roads in Albany, wherever you are in South Georgia. Tonight is not the night to be out. Stay where you are until at least the morning, at least when the light comes out, you'll be able to tell if there's a tree, if there's a power line, anything that's in the road. Hey guys, I'm live outside of the station right now. As you can see, the rain has let up some, but the wind has not. It is howling all around me. The eye of the storm is moving closer to us, so you are going to be seeing those breaks in the storm a little bit, but you definitely should not get comfortable because it is not over. We could still see hurricane force gusts till 2, 3 a.m., and these are the counties right now. They are under a flash flood warning. They have expanded the flash flood warning and extended it uh, for Sumter County, for Crisp County, for Dooley County, and for Webster and Stewart County. It goes till 3 a.m. because of very heavy rainfall, rain rates of three to five inches per hour. And we can really see that that heavy rainfall is in the northeast corner of Lee County, eastern half of Sumter County, all of Dooley County, all of Chris County, all of Wilcox County. We head south in through Irwin County and Ben Hill County. We're getting some moderate to heavy rainfall. Tifton and these uh, winds continue to blow here. It's hard to pick out any specifically. Of course, Albany, Bainbridge, uh, Cuthbert area, Sylvester, Tifton, Ashburn, Cordell, Thomasville, Moultrie, Pelham, Camilla. I mean, every city uh, here, uh, every area in southwest Georgia has people with power out. This is a widespread outage uh, right now, so make sure that you've got uh, your WAOB first alert weather app. Um, the storm is still moving right now, still a hurricane. Uh, uh, just to make things even more um, stressful for people out there trying to get anywhere at this point. Uh, I don't think there's any reason to venture out. We well, have to think that wind has been whipping and howling and these things are weak now. And so, like we said, more things can fall and will. Yeah, and it's not just here in uh, South Georgia where we're seeing bad stuff. Uh, Headland, Alabama. This is video right here of power lines exploding and catching fire during Michael. It's about 100 miles north of uh, oh Panama City. We've seen uh, uh, power lines arcing here, some on fire down in uh, Thomasville. Hey, Cade, we do have uh, some continuous power outage updates coming in to our first alert desk tonight. Uh, Tiff County Emergency Management Agency is reporting 30,867 uh, customers are reporting outages in Tiff County. That's in that includes uh, Georgia Power and Colquitt EMC. Yeah, it's pretty scary out there. All of the debris, the different limbs that you're seeing on the roadways, just trying to get to work or where you may have to be. You can get uh, a little ways, <laughs> but then you're going to be stopped somewhere along the line by yeah. a downed tree or then, of course, all the debris uh, and down and, power and down lines. Power lines. Uh, they, the power lines weren't down when I came in about uh, 6 30, 7 o'clock tonight, but then they fell. Yeah, and, I was on uh, Dawson Road. Again, it's, it's still dangerous, so uh, hopefully folks have heeded that warning. We hate to keep sounding like a broken record, as we said before. Stay inside. Yeah. Don't do that. Well, the district looks. Uh, it looked like this storm, Michael, looked like it just equally distributed the damage. We got damage from one end of the county to the other ends. 72 hours after Hurricane Michael ripped through Doherty County, Commissioner Anthony Jones took WLB through many neighborhoods in the Putney community and saw the devastation it left behind. Now, you know, we're going to try to uh, restore it back. So, you know, uh, just take it one day at a time, mostly. Carl Davis's family has lived in a home near Nims Road for over 50 years. And because of the Category 2 hurricane, their home, much like many homes in the county, are left with trees in the roof. Yeah, as we looked at his home, we noticed that he had a tree in the home. So therefore, you're going to need a chainsaw and you're going to need some expert help. And help for everyone in the county whose homes are damaged. He says they can go to the old cola plant to receive help. To have those type situations, to go over to the Pine Avenue over there where the organized volunteers are, maybe the chainsaw group or some of those folks over there can come out and help them remove that tree from their, uh, from their property. And As we continue to assess the damages here in Worth County, it's hard to overlook what happened here in downtown Sylvester. This right here, a metal roof, uh, what used to be a metal roof, now caved in at First Baptist Church. Now, if you look at the front of the church, obviously it's tough to see that there's any damages. But what I'm told is the walkthrough from the educational building over to the fellowship hall is where you can see that roof just caved in right in the middle. And it's a pretty astonishing sight. 
A lot of people have been passing by and taking pictures and looking at it. Um, not something that you want to see, of course, metal all throughout, and, and even on the ground and the side walkways and in the front is just a sight to behold. Uh, some damages to kind of repair here at the church, the First Baptist Church here in Worth County. I spoke with a member who said um, that, you know, obviously this is, you know, the church he goes to. It's a sad sight to see, uh, but he's glad that nobody, to his knowledge, was hurt in what could have been something pretty bad if anybody was in this building or in that walkthrough at the time. Uh, for now in Worth County, Theo Dorsey, WALB News 10. I'm here at the Doherty County EOC where County Chairman Chris Kohelis called the storm's damage the worst the county has seen. He says the destruction is widespread and he's asking the state and federal governments for help. City officials are working on moving the trees and limbs off of power lines now, but they are asking that everyone stay off the roads. Crews can't get to the fallen trees and power lines when people are out and blocking the pass. City Manager Sharon Subedan also called this a utilities crisis. City officials say they don't know of anyone who has power without a generator. Crews are coming in from all over to help, but they don't know when the power will be restored. A full unit from the National Guard is coming in to help as well. If you do have a storm-related emergency, call the EOC at 229-483-6226. If it's any other emergency, call 911. Even with the numerous extra crews and linemen, the storm's cleanup will be a long-term process. In Doherty County, Grayson Passmore, WALB News 10. Now from WAOP News 10, this is an editorial and call to action from Vice President and General Manager Jim Wilcox. It's been nearly a week since Hurricane Michael blew into South Georgia, leaving a path of chaos and devastation. The storm killed more than a dozen people across Florida, Georgia, and several other states, destroying homes, businesses, and livelihoods. Everything I have in them, I idea everything. <laughs> so I can keep my head up about it. The images of damage and destruction across our communities is heartbreaking. Thousands are still without food and water, even more without power, with no access to internet, TV, or radio. Millions of dollars in pecan, cotton, and other crops have been decimated. And yet, the moment tragedy strikes is when the heart of South Georgia shines through. I think we're going to rise out of this and maybe be even a better community than we were. Um, this event will not define who we are. Um, but it will define um, where we go. No truer words were ever spoken. A big thank you to our first responders and emergency teams who put their own lives on the line in the worst of the conditions to rescue those of us in need and to keep South Georgians safe. Thank you to all the linemen and utility workers who have been working nonstop since last week to get power and water back to our communities. And a thank you to many volunteers who made their own sacrifices after the storm to help out both neighbors and strangers. We owe you all a debt of gratitude. The road to recovery will be long, but we have seen Mother Nature at its worst before. South Georgia will bounce back and we will be stronger for it. If you would like to respond, please go to the Community tab and look for the WALB editorial page on our website at WALB.com or send a letter to this address. A disastrous event devastated one community still reeling from tornadoes that swept through the area less than two years ago. We had projects already lined up in response to the storms we had in 2017. But completing those projects in Doherty County will become even more difficult in light of Hurricane Michael. There are repairs that have been done that are going to have to be done again, which slows down the completion of projects. And these added storm repairs aren't something the county can handle financially on its own. There's very strict rules about disaster funding not being commingled, but there are ways for us to increase the amount of a project that we're able to complete. Because of Michael, the county may be eligible for more funding from the state and federal governments. Right now, the county is getting temporary assistance and county leaders say they're hoping for permanent work instead. We're at those beginning stages of, of um, creating the projects, determining what the greatest needs are in the community and where we can best apply resources that we might be eligible for to make this community more resilient moving forward.
This destroyed metal behind me was a carport garage less than a week ago. Now families all over southwest Georgia are left to clean up the mess Hurricane Michael brought to the region. Whole homes are now completely unlivable after Hurricane Michael swept through Albany. One of your biggest investments is your home and, and you want to make sure that, that it's protected and, and taken care of. And before you start to move storm debris from your house or car, take pictures. If you have a tree right on top of your house that's you know blocking you in or it's okay to move it as long as you're documenting it and taking pictures of it. Stephen Farner, a property adjuster with Georgia Farm Bureau, is working with a team to assess damage at about 4,000 homes in the area. And after his third house of the day, he's seen unthinkable damage. Seen a lot of trees on houses, um, a lot of them unfortunately through houses all the way through. But Farner says documenting the damage isn't the only thing homeowners should do. Be wary of, of who you trust with your repairs. Um, you know, you want to be comfortable with that person. Don't just pick the first person that rolls down the street from, you know, wherever. Do your homework on it. Farner warns of people who will try and take advantage of others' vulnerability after a traumatic event like Michael, something another homeowner, Mary Jenkins, knows all too well. They just ask for if they want to help and you let them help and then sometimes they do it and then they don't show up. You know, they don't come back redo the job, you know. Jenkins warns of one important thing when dealing with debris or tree removal companies you may not be familiar with. Yeah, don't 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 give any money at the beginning. But if they do the job and come back, that's okay. Farner says he and other adjusters will work here in Albany and the surrounding communities for as long as they're needed. In Albany, Grayson Passmore, WOB News 10.